This video is going to look at lab report, especially criteria C. So how will we structure this? The first section is data processing. So this is any calculations that have to be done with your data. So in the previous um, criteria, criteria B, you would have collected data. So now you're going to have to manipulate this data and it's called data processing. This ma manipulation may include mean, mode, percentage. There is a load of different ways to manipulate your data. It just depends on the data. Any formulas used, you should um, include in this section. You need to give one example of using that formula. So you don't need to show every calculation that you've done, just one example per formula. You should also include a few words to why you picked that formula. Right, next is the data process table. This is very similar to the previous table. So you can see here, this is the raw data table that I'm putting in first. Okay, I have here the mean. The mean should be in a separate table by itself. So your raw data should be on, in one table and process data should be in a separate table. And I'm going to give you an example of how to fill in this table. So imagine a person that is going to run 100 meters. Okay. So distance is our independent variable. We're going to keep changing the distance. So we have 100 meters, 200 meters, 300 meters, 400 meters. And we're going to record how long it takes that person to run that distance. So the first time that you do it in trial one, to remind you that you put the time in the dependent variable. So the first time you do it in trial one, they, it takes them 12 seconds. The next time they do it is 14 seconds, and the third time they do it is 16 seconds. So we've repeated the experiment three times to get a better and more reliable results. We know that the formula for mean is the sum of the trials over the number of trials, so that will give you 14. This is processed data. We have done calculations with this. And a reminder, this process data should be in a separate table. So you should start off with a raw data table with just the calculations you got from the experiment. Then you should show formulas and then you should have a separate table for process data. Right, the next is a graph. We should be well aware that there's a y and x axis to a graph. On the x axis is the independent variable where on the y-axis is the dependent variable. Don't forget to also include the following. A title. Axis titles and units. So you should have the units underneath both. You should have a proper scale of numbers. Okay. And now we're going to actually have to look at patterns for a graph. So I'm going to give you an example here of a distance time graph. So we'll have distance and time in minutes. So imagine that I have now got a set of results and it gives me the following data points. We can see that this creates a line of best fit, which is a straight line graph. So how do we describe uh, the patterns in this graph? First of all, is there a relationship between the variables? Let's have a little look. So if we start at distance, and we're going to go to, at 200 meters, if we go up from 200 meters, to the line of best fit and across, we will notice that the time is about 1.8 minutes. 
However, if we go to now 500 meters, so we increase the time, we also see that the time, uh, or if we increase the distance, should I say, we all also see that the time has increased. So at 500 meters, time takes 4.7 minutes. So initially, at a lower distance, the time takes less. At a higher distance, the time takes more. So as distance increases, the time taken increases. If both variables increase or both decrease, this is called a direct relationship between variables, also known as they are directly proportional. However, if one variable increases whilst the other decreases, this is called an indirect relationship between variables, or they are indirectly proportional. And that's how you can describe them, either directly proportional or indirectly proportional. So we're going to have a look at the same graph again. This time I've included some key scientific terms that I want you to be aware of. So the X represents words that we should not use and the tick represents words we should use. So goes up. This is not very scientific. Instead, we should use words like increase. Goes down. Again, not very scientific. We should use the word decrease. And stays the same. Instead, we should use the word constant. If you see any mistakes in your results, so are there any anomalies or mistakes? So I've included a little data point here that you can see in yellow. Why doesn't it fit or follow the line of best fit? You might need to have a little look at your results table and see have you made any mistakes in your result? Does it follow the trend? You need to think, should you disregard this point? You need to, might need to repeat um, that data point and see do you get the exact same result. So evaluation, there's two ways to evaluate uh, your experiment. One is evaluation of hypothesis and the other one is evaluation of method. So we're going to first of all start with evaluation of hypothesis. Does your data support your hypothesis? Use data that does or does not support your hypothesis. So, when, what I mean by does your data support your hypothesis? Is it agreeing with it or not? Notice how I don't say, um, yes, my hypothesis is correct. That would not be scientific. Your hypothesis is either supported by your data or not. And you should give example of this data. It is also correct if, you, if your data doesn't support your hypothesis. It just means that your original prediction was wrong. So as I said, don't say your um, hypothesis was correct. Say your data supports your hypothesis and give examples of this data. Um, include any other research that supports your hypothesis and you need to reference this. Right, next is evaluation of method. There's two, way, two types of errors when it comes to evaluating your method. One is reliability, and second is validity. So we're going to start with reliability. Will the experiment give you the same result each time, each time you do it? If it doesn't give you the same results, the experiment or the method is not consistent and therefore not reliable. Okay. Uh, a reason for this is using poor tools that may result in unreliable results. So you might need to evaluate what tools you used. The second is validity. Does your method actually measure what you want it to measure or assess? So here you're looking at the variables. If not, your method is not 
palette. So, make sure your variables are the correct ones um, to assess what you want to investigate. For an example here, if you're looking at a person's uh, BMI, does, is measuring their weight a good way of assessing their BMI? Or another way of thinking of this is, if you want to see is age related to height, is measuring their weight again a good way of assessing it? Have you chosen the correct variables? If not, your experiment is not valid. And does your tools give you a valid set of data? Okay, it's another way of assessing it. Finally, you should look at suggesting improvements. So, what would you do now to change uh, the experiment to make it more valid or make it more reliable? Avoid words like the following. Work harder or do more. Okay, these are not very scientific um, terms and they're not specific enough. Um, this part of suggestion improvements may require some additional research. So you might need to look at alternative ways of doing the exact same experiment that might be a little bit more reliable or valid. Once you have all these areas complete, you will have completed criteria C.